Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Lightning is one of my very favorite spirits of all time, and I love the base version. I also like playing all of the aspects. And I realized I have not yet shown off the Pandemonium aspect yet on this channel. Now, Lightning is very strong against England, being able to ignore that extra health. Um, I think it's a very fun matchup playing Lightning versus England 6, and I have featured that on this channel before. So now we're going to play that same matchup, except this time we're going to be playing as the Pandemonium aspect, and that's going to completely change our approach. We're 100% going for that Fear Rush this time, um, but we're going to have a little bit less control on the board, not being able to remove things as easily. So let's see how it goes. Starting off in the jungles. All right. Hmm. So on board F, uh, I like to put three presents into land number two. So that way um, I can sacrifice a presence if need be. You know, three and two, three and eight. Everything is within range one of a sacred site. And if I were to do that right now, in order to protect that presence and not let it just die immediately, I would need to shatter homesteads on the two and then strife off the city, probably bring some to Han in. And that would require me to sacrifice this, uh, this to Han here in land number five. Uh, the other approach that I would take is to, um, you know, strife or kill off uh, this town here in land number five, let land number two blight, and then invest actions into whatever else is going on in the board. And I do like being able to get ahead of the invaders whenever possible. So I think we're going to have a slightly different presence arrangement. I think we're going to go for the three, five, eight arrangement for our presence. Just to give our opening a little bit more of a clean, straightforward deal. Going to the mountains next. Okay. Mountains is one of those trains that's easy to deal with. We can just destroy one town and strife the other one, and then life is good. So I'm pretty happy with uh, going about it in this style. It will allow me to uh, just always stay one step ahead. Yeah, the plus one damage. Okay. Free Dahan. That's great. Getting the extra Dahan down here in the corner. Because it's just a really hard Dahan to pair up with anything else. Great, this is a pretty smooth start to the game. And now we start our loop. Uh, Cold and Migrate is generally pretty bad. Um, because we have 7 to Han instead of an even number, Harbingers can create these awkward situations where there's just a Dahan left behind. And this does shore up that problem, but I'm not sure that's important enough to do to play this card i guess the only other thing that would take besides call to migra would be flow down river and the big advantage of flow down river is that it costs zero though water does not matter because we're playing as pandemonium as opposed to base base would like this card much more um, being able to hit that uh, third tier but we're looking for moon cards instead um i think i'm fine with call to migrate uh, considering that we need Dahan to be in the right places to gain advantages on the board, uh, Call to Migrate does accomplish that goal, even if it does it uh, at the at a one cost, uh, where we have a zero cost option. So we might not even touch this card for a while, but you know when we get there, it'll be nice. Uh, let's see if we play it right now, we do get an extra two fear when you're playing as base lightning and all you need to kill is a town, there's really no point to spend the energy in this situation, but now we get an extra two fear, even if that strife is irrelevant. 
I think I'm going to save the energy for right now. Just that I, I like to keep our energy up just in case we find ourselves in a pinch. Or actually, we can do better. We can get rid of this lightning spoon and we can play Call to Migrate instead. Because this is functionally a blank. And... Yeah, we can just let this be. If we get an event that kills off an explorer from the beast, we'll be super happy. Because um, it's always nearly impossible to deny a build against England. Uh, and check that out. That's fantastic for us. Uh, skipping a Ravage. Uh, it's irrelevant, but we can skip the mountains. That wasn't going to blight anyways. Now just a single town there. This is beautiful. Okay, well, our goal is going to be to get that to um, happen again. And so I'm going to kill the town here in the 8. So that way, if we're lucky, um, or if maybe we draft some kind of a solution for this single explorer, we can deny the back-to-back. If it was not for this very niche situation, I would have destroyed the building out of land number two in order to slow down and delay the loss condition. Um, our Dahan's already in the right place, so... And even if we kill that explorer, there's plenty of buildings here. So I'm just going to move these guys over here just to pick up that fear. And being in the dead center is about as good as it can be, so I'm not going to worry about this call to migrate. Or actually, hold on a second, we could use call to migrate to drop a Dahan into here so it'll die during the Ravage. Yeah, okay, that's super good. So we'll bring three in, kick one out. Um, yeah, we only need one to get kicked out. Since the biggest issue with having a single isolated Dahan is if it's adjacent to a city, it can get transformed because of that event. And there is no adjacent city. Hopefully there's no adjacent anything. And um, so that's, that's not an issue to be concerned about. All right, well, we got a Fire Moon card, and it is a Dahan movement card, so it's kind of like Call to Migrate, except it does have the uh, other off element. Uh, definitely a card that's worth picking up and holding on to. Um, absorb, uh, sorry, Renewing Boon would be an interesting one, because if we do take Blight at range zero somehow, uh, this is the like single best card. Uh, it's completely off element, so we would never play it up until we get to that situation. So I doubt we're ever going to use it, but it is a good thing to keep in mind. We will need a defend card on the next cycle um, because, well, uh, we have no other way of dealing with land number three without defense. So this Shatter Home said we're almost assuredly going to send here to the two, and we're going to double strife off land number three. So we are going to be playing a bunch of cards now. Hmm. So yeah, we can deny um, a build here, which is, I think, worth it. Because we have nowhere that we need to put our Dahan otherwise. So just denying buildings, I think, is a good thing. And we could earn ourselves another fear card. If this was not going to get us up to terror level 2, I would not take the fear card here. But because this will get us up to terror level 2 and thus make all of our fear cards better, uh, it's 100% worth it to just kind of blindly throw those Harbingers out there. If we need our Dahan in a specific place, we still have Call to Migrate in the slow. Uh, definitely putting it in the 1, because we don't want to accelerate this loss condition. And we don't need this push to happen. So therefore, we're just not going to, because there's no bonus damage coming down. So this will just clear. And this is irrelevant. We're going to be moving everything with Call to Migrate. Okay, free Strife. Strifing off the cities is always the most efficient. 
Uh, remove an explorer. This guy's going to die anyway, so we'll just get rid of you. And I guess after all of that, we still don't need to worry about that explorer. Okay, well, now land number two is really the only land that matters. Uh, it is threatening a lot. So we don't need this Dahan back here anymore, so we can collect and push. Uh, any defend card, we only need defend two in order to survive in, in this land here. And that's a really ugly defend two. I mean, I guess it is a defend too, but good god, it's not what we wanted. Um, unfortunately, I I think I take it here, which is a real shame. No reason to take a blight if we have a means to prevent it, and if we don't prevent it, the Dahan's gonna die anyways. So, uh, <laughs> one of the worst cards in the game, in my opinion. Uh, but there it is. You do what you got to do. We want to play Shatter Homesteads every single turn. And not getting that Strife is a real shame. Hmm. Is there no zero cost option for us? We have Treacherous Waterways. And that's a big old blank here. So, yeah, no Isolates, no nothing. Mm, well, rip us. Uh, I guess instead of playing Shatter Homesteads, we could... Well, even if we do play this, we could do like this, 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 all of that just to get two fear and a strife. And this is why I would not uh, play that card if it wouldn't gotten us the tower level two uh, immediately, because it would allow us to get away with having a smaller fear turn. Hmm. Yeah, I think... It's just better just to get Shatter Homesteads. It's the same amount of fear. And instead of adding a Strife, we get to remove a town. So I do think it's better. Very awkward situation, but it is what it is. This single Dahan isn't going to do anything, and it's just a liability. So we're just going to kick him out. Okay, we can certainly do Weave Curiosity here. We have the Defend 2. And there's plenty of cards that we can discard. Great, that fear prevents the double build, which prevents a blight from coming down. That's a big deal. Okay, what do we got? We got the sands. Well, let's see if we can pull this off. Uh, Fire in the Sky is a fantastic card. Produces a good amount of fear. Probably going to have to wind up taking the Blight here in the 5 just to survive in the 2. But, alas, we can't all be winners. Uh, let's see. Two more cards, two more energy. So I think it's better for us to do something like this. Come here with the fire in the sky. Strifing off the city. Throw down some more strife and fear. We can prevent a build, which I think is good. And we don't have enough fear on hand to get another fear card. Looking at four damage here in land number two. So I'm going to kick in an extra Dahan. Then we can return everything later with Call to Migrate. Alright, get a free beast. Thank you very much. Defend one per Dahan. That's exactly what we needed. Okay, a little bit of energy. Unfortunately, we're still going to take a Blight and lose our presence in the five, but it's a thought that counts. 
killing off the city because we have no way of killing off cities otherwise. We do have to explore one thing as a town, and I think the wilds will not let it uh, consume it. Oh, it does. That's fascinating. Okay. Uh, certainly, we want to get Oliver Dahan over here to the uh, F1. Uh, let's see, we need two for this. One, two. Um, we could do that. That'll get us down to a single explorer, and that single explorer won't make a difference in terms of like denying a build or anything like that. Let's see. If we were to take the opportunity and grow right now, we could Razor Sharp Undergrowth here, Shatter Homesteads this, Raging Storm, um, and we also have our Innate. Yeah, so we don't Raging Storm, we, we Innate this, Raging Storm, and then we can uh, Shatter Homestead something else somewhere else. It's a good time to sneak that in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, so we have to grow like so. Um, okay, in order to survive here, we strife you. Already terror level three, super fast. So much faster than if we were playing base. And we'll save the Shatter Homesteads um, until we see what happens. In fact, we could even use it here in the one to help deny this uh, land from being an issue. All lands without buildings? This is England. <laughs> they always have buildings. Ooh, gather two Dahan, one damage per Dahan. This is going to clear anyway, so that doesn't gain us any advantage. We have one, two, three, four, five HP in this land. So we could gather one Dahan out and then use it as a free town kill. Strife in a land with or adjacent to beast. Skip all actions in beast lands. Hey, denies a bill. Uh, let's just strife off here since this is the next act of land. Oh, it skips the Ravage. That's very unfortunate. Well, it's already strifed off, and thankfully the strife survives to the next turn. So it's not like it makes life harder for us. Oh, that's funny. It was only going to explore here because of the event, and it has a beast, which means it also doesn't explore. <laughs> okay. We will kill the unstrifed town. That way we can, when we reclaim, we can strife this land to solve it. Purifying Flame. Great card. Uh, keeps us alive. And as long as we can just keep ourselves not dead, uh, we can get around to winning the game later. So I'm always happy to see this card uh, on Lightning. It's great elements for us. It does everything that we want. So now that we have the fifth card play, if we play our cards right, we can uh, hit that extra tier for the extra three fear. Um, we will have to play rights. And then after that, all we need is four more dual element cards. And yeah, we have three energy, three card plays, so we can't play this Shatter Homesteads. But we can do this. And yep, we have enough air, everything becomes fast, so we have tons of flexibility. This Rights of Land Rejection will solve the one for us by denying that build. We can get ourselves our three fear here. Or three uh, strife, sorry. And then in the three, we're just going to take a Blight. So let's remove a Blight right now. So that way uh, we don't flip the Blight card. I don't think... We need to move any Dahan, and there, we're not close enough to getting another Fear card for us to throw anything away early. So let's just uh, let it ride. Uh, most invaders matching a Ravage card. We have five here in land number two. If we do that, that kills a city and two explorers. 
Not a big fan of that. Considering that we've already gone through the entire stage two, the downside, the penalty of skipping a Ravage is only half of what it was. So it's great, prevents us from taking a Blight here and losing a Presence. Seems like all upside to me. Tons of free defense. Okay, and that's uh, this is actually a bad thing, right? Because we were going to collect three fear off of this land, and now we're not. Um, so we will remove explorers to uh, reduce the amount of fear that we deny ourselves from getting. Did I say skip Ravage, or I guess it's defend it either way. I don't know which button I clicked. <laughs> It animated like it ravaged. Maybe I misclicked on this guy? Well, we're in an unlosable position. We only need seven more fear to win. So we're just going to reclaim, play this all again, use our innate for seven fear, and just win the game on the spot. And that is a little bit of pandemonium to make your day nice. <laughs> just kind of clicking buttons here, going through the motions really does not matter what we do because we have OP amounts of fear. Um, oh, I'm one energy short of being able to do it. That's awkward. Uh, I guess we'll do this. All right, that's a fear of victory. Yeah, we have so much fear. Um, yeah, Pandemonium Lightning, I think, is a super fun spirit. Um, it, it can be kind of a meme with just the absurd amounts of fear that it produces, but uh, there's no such thing as too much fun. I'm also very happy with just the way that that land number seven worked out. Um, we were able to deny the build uh, right at the start of the game. We got that lucky with that event. And then because wetlands just never came up again, we just kind of got to free roll. We got that back to back. Yeah, denied the build here, and then everything else was super easy. So sometimes this uh, corner lane can be really awkward, but in this situation, it was the best thing for us. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and have yourselves a glorious day.